Hello, everyone, and welcome to the My Dancing Eyes podcast, episode two. My name is Frankie, and my guest's name is Haley. And we actually met each other on the subreddit for Nystagmus. And pretty much just a couple months ago when I started the podcast, I asked a bunch of people if they wanted to be on the episode, and she reached out to me and said that she wanted to be on it. So here we go. Um, also, if anybody is interested on in being on the podcast, if you have nystagmus or even if you're like a parent of somebody who has nystagmus and you, you want to be on the show, just uh, reach out to me. My email account is going to be in the description of the video. It's going to be frankiecaputo at gmail.com. So yeah, just reach out to me. And also, I just want to apologize real quick um, for the audio quality. I just recently moved, and my microphone is still down in Florida, and I have to get it shipped up here. So I'm going to work on that. But for the future episodes, I'll most likely have it on me. So, uh, yeah, here you go. Here's the episode. All right, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, recording now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, hi, everybody. Thank you for checking into the Dancing Eyes podcast. This is episode two. And I have Haley on here. Hi. Um, so we met each other on Reddit, which is how I've, I've actually found a few other like people who are going to be on the podcast in the future that I met on Reddit as well. So that's like a pretty, like the, the subreddit for Nice Diamonds is a pretty solid way of meeting some people on there. Um, there's also, I don't know if you know, there's also a Discord as well. It's not as active, but there is a Discord mm -hmm. too. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I didn't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're just going to pretty much like go through some stories and, you know, share some back and forth on like, like childhood and like how nystagmus has affected us and stuff like that. Yeah. It sounds great. Sweet. So do you have any, um, well, I guess I, mean, I would start with like on a scale of one to 10, how do you, how much you think nystagmus affects your life? Like on a day to day basis? Yeah, I think I have a <clears throat> relatively severe uh, case. I, um, I'm one that can't drive and I have a lot of trouble with depth perception and like doing things in straight lines. Um, so how much of that is nystagmus is a little unclear because I also have a Chiari malformation, which means that um, my brainstem is kind of fusing into my spine is actually what it is. And so there are some weird um, vision stuff that can come up from that. And I've also got strabismus and uh, same all that oh yeah have you had surgery i've I had um like a no point correction surgery when i was 13 and okay. it actually straightened that it out a little bit but it's not fully straight but you know it's a little better yeah what about yeah, you i've had both sides shortened um the inner muscles and the outer muscles because <laughs> i had going too far apart and then going too far together oh so like it was too far apart and then they went to to fix it and then they they like overcorrected it well they i do believe they overcorrected the second uh time but so the the first time i was about four and i was seeing double all of the time and like all of the time running into walls which now it's maybe like once a week <laughs> um, <laughs> um and then when i was 18 i was feeling like i couldn't follow a line in a on text and they thought maybe it was because they were pulling, because they, yeah, they cut the inner muscles the second time because they told me it was going to be worse. Not that I remembered that well. <laughs> um, and that's because they were going too far out, right? So they had to straighten it out to go closer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So are you still seeing double at all or has that been taken care of? I see double at certain angles. And then, you know, the more tired I am or... Um, you know, activated, anxious, anything like that, the worse it is. But after surgery, I saw double a hundred percent of the time for like Same. a week or two. It was so awful. Um, it was scary for me because I had never seen double first. Like I've never seen it before. I wasn't born with double vision. And yeah. then I got the surgery and then boom, like double vision instantly. Was, and then it, um, yeah. I had to actually wear prisms in my glasses for a while and that helped. Okay. Yeah, I had prisms before I had surgery. And then after, I guess I was still wearing them. They didn't give me new glasses immediately or anything like that. So I was in high school, uh, my last semester of high school, and I had people leading me around the hallways. <laughs> oh, 
How did, were you in school or was it during the summer when you got it? So I got it um, in August. So it was right at the end of summer, right before, right before school season. Started. Yeah. So, so you didn't have to like navigate the halls or anything like that. Thankfully not. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went back to school. I had an academic team competition I wasn't willing to miss. So I went right back go. to school. And, um, <laughs> Trooper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how bad do you say, like, how bad would you say your vision is? Now, um, I mean, it's pretty bad. I can't see very far away. And, you know, they say that with, uh, like, higher levels of schooling, it gets harder and harder with each one because your eyes get tired faster. Okay. And so now I'm in law school, my eyes get tired pretty fast. Um, so I would say, I mean, if we want a scale of one to 10, I would say like seven. Well, I'm like, um, so for me, um, well, I, I got LASIK recently, but before oh, cool. the LASIK, I was um, like without glasses, I was 2200. And then oh, yeah, yeah. Classes, I was like 2060. Yeah, that's about, that's about what I am now. Um, okay. They, uh, I think I'm like 2070 one eye, 2060 the other eye with glasses. I'm probably right around there. Yeah, without, I, last, time, last time I got without uh, tested at all, I was in what, eighth or ninth grade and I was trying to get a physical to be on the swim team at like this physical night that they had at the high school. So they just had nurses like cranking people through so everybody could get it done. Mm -hmm. And they did a vision test and they were like, you are not okay. <laughs> I was like, no, I know, like, I know. And I know yes. that they do the thing, they shake, I get yeah. it. Yeah, they were freaking out. And then they, they didn't clear me to play sports. They were like, you, I don't think it's a good idea. And so I had to go like the whole physical night time saving thing did not work out because I still had to go to my doctor and like get my eye doctor to give a doctor's note. Yeah, you had to get a note stuff. for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've had to do that before. I used to play football when I was younger oh, wow. and I had to get a note for my doctor to to let them put me on the team. I actually wore I actually wore glasses underneath my helmet. <laughs> and I, I looked I looked so dorky I, I um they were actually like Gucci glasses too and everybody would call me Gucci that, that, was, that was my nickname <laughs> so funny yeah great so, did you were you not about contacts then oh it's like a I was gonna say it's like a love-hate relationship with them but it's actually really not it's mostly just a hate relationship <laughs> just because they've always I Anytime I was recommended a pair of contacts, it was always like the hard, permeable glass lenses. Oh no! <laughs> uh, and they're like awful. these small, these small little lenses, and you can't bend them. They're like literally like. Mm -hmm. hard no, glass. actually, I know about them because my grandma was one of the first to like test them uh, back in the '40s, I think. Oh. Uh, so she she got to be in on the ground. Lucky, lucky her. Contacts, yeah. yeah. Well, at the time, nobody would have known because there weren't soft lenses. So these were like the first contacts. Oh, they started off hard and then transitioned to soft. Oh, I didn't even mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like those were always recommended to me because supposedly they would, they would stick with your eyes better during the movements and they would give you a clearer, okay. uh, they'd give you clearer vision. Okay. And no idea. Mm -hmm. so I, at the time I was like 12, 13 and I had never worn contacts before. Mm -hmm. And then my mom would have to put them in for me and then it would take her like an hour for each eye. Cause I was so squeamish. I didn't want anybody going anywhere near my eyes. And, um, yeah, eventually I was good enough and I was able to get them in by myself and they were just too painful. Like I felt oh, them every second of the day. Yeah. I'm sure. Super but... uncomfortable. Sorry, Philly. Uh, <laughs> You're good. So, uh, what's, uh, what's your relationship with contacts? I did contacts in middle school and I just didn't love them. People would give me a hard time about uh, wearing them. Like they thought that it was like going back and forth bothered them. I think that I had just like, I had grown up with these kids. I had been wearing glasses with them for seven years. And so they're like, your face looks wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then in high school I got prism. So I wasn't a, eligible for contacts anymore. Oh, that's the, oh, right. Cause you can't get that in a contact. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I did use soft shell, not hard shell. That sounds awful. <laughs> 
Oh, it was terrible. I wouldn't, I was, I was going to say I wouldn't recommend it, but it works out for a lot of people too. I hear a lot of success stories with that. It's just like, I couldn't do it, but mm-hmm. a lot of people yeah. can do it. So to each their own. Yeah. So, so earlier you were saying you don't drive, right? Right. Yeah. So how old were you when you learned that you weren't going to be able to drive or was this kind of just a mindset that you were brought up with? Yeah, that's, it sounds like it's familiar experience to you that I was sort of brought up to like be prepared to not be able to drive, which made it easier, but not that much easier when Mm -hmm. like I was driving around the parking lot and my dad's like, no, (laughs) like (laughs) this isn't going to work. Sorry. Um, Yeah. And yeah, so that's, that's basically that. But in the back of my mind for my whole life, I had it like, I prepared myself in that I was like, okay, if I can't drive, I can't live in this city. Um, I can't live where my family lives because I w- won't be able to like be a professional and, you know, live my own life and do stuff that I want to do without like, you know, unless I think I'm going to be able to afford to Uber everywhere, which probably not. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So, so is that why you're in Philly now? Cause you've only been in Philly for a year and a half, right? Yeah. So my husband and I moved here for law school. I go to the University of Pennsylvania Law School, um, which is where I always wanted to go. Philly was like the first city with public transit that I got to visit. Um, And when we were here, I was like 14. We were on like historical tour. And I like we didn't even take the metro or we subway metro l there's a lot of interchangeable terms for it out here um but we didn't even take it but i made us like go down and look at it because i was 14 and i was like i'm very excited about yeah uh because i'm pretty sure that's the way it's gonna have to go and uh, the funny thing about it is philly is disgusting like our public transit is disgusting like it's nobody's dream is it? Just, yeah okay. i mean we have a trash problem we're not like our reputation is true that we're not like a put together city. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anything. So that's I, why the Eagles are the way that they are. I, I don't know. It's not impossible. So yeah, that I was like fell in love with it. I was like, this is so awesome. This is where I'm going to live. And also, you know, I'm really into the history and just thought it was cool. And then Penn was also my dream. So I just, my husband was great. He was like, follow your dream, do it. And that's where we'll go. His dream was New York, but we went to Philly and public a little transport, bit of that. Uh, The public transport over there is pretty good too. Yeah. Oh, it's much better. Yeah. <laughs> it's for sure much better. But <laughs> the other thing about that is like, I don't mind walking. Like I find it kind of empowering. Like taking public transit is great, but just going somewhere like of your own accord, um, so I walk a lot. I would walk a lot less in New York. <laughs> okay. Good exercise. Yeah. There you definitely. go. Yeah. I'm over, um, well, in Georgia over here, the, the public transportation system is not very good. So yeah, that's like, yeah. yeah, that's a goal of mine is to get somewhere where the public transport's yeah. better. So you don't drive either? No, I don't drive, but I actually, I, I have a driver's license. Okay. So like technically I could drive. Cool. I, so I wasn't actually uh, raised with the idea that I couldn't drive. It was just kind of something that I kind of started figuring out on my own as mm-hmm. I got older. And I've um, like, I didn't get my license until I was 21. So just like a few months ago. So oh, okay. I, I've, um, I've driven a, like a few, like a handful of times. Mm-hmm. And um, I even, before I got my license, I took some driving lessons I mm-hmm. took three lessons with an instructor okay. and I never actually, well, the first time I drove, I kind of like ran into a mailbox, but it's not, <laughs> it's not because I didn't see the mailbox. It's because I didn't know how to drive. <laughs> it's because yeah. there was yeah. a car driving. <laughs> There's a car like driving in my direction and I wanted to avoid the car and I, and I kind of like turned the wheel and then I hit a mailbox. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but, yeah. Well, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, you did operating the vehicle was its own challenge so yeah that was like yeah so people would think that it was because i couldn't see but actually it was because i just literally couldn't drive but yeah um, i mean you're a lot of new drivers get it (laughs) sorry i choked a lot (laughs) of new drivers get into scrapes like that yeah but the uh the driving instructor said that that i was good to go 
I just, yeah. I just felt a little bit uncomfortable. I was like, well, this actually brings me on to my next question. I, like to me, I would rather just have the car like drive me like with the new technology um, and, and Tesla's are getting really good with the autonomous vehicles. Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of just waiting for the technology to get there mm-hmm. and then I'll just get oh, yeah. something like that. What do you think of something like that? I mean, I think it's great. I think it's really empowering. I also think that like, I always kind of bring up myself when people are questioning it from a policy perspective, which, you know, in law school, we talk about things from a policy perspective a lot, but you sort of wonder about, I mean, first of all, there's the question of the system. Um, There's either like private ownership or it's not your car, but there are cars going places all the time, like autonomous Ubers, like most cars are autonomous Ubers basically. So that's like one question all about the American dream and all that. Um, But then I always bring up like, okay, so if we do this, there has to be a fail safe because the the car companies aren't going to not have a fail safe. It would be too risky for liability. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, do you have to have a license? Can you be drunk? Can you not see like who can you be five years old? Who, who gets to be riding around in this car by themselves. Right. And so I'm not like opposed to it. I think it would be great. I think it'd be really empowering. I also have the American dream. I would love to own a car. That's my car. Like that's how we are trained to think. Um, but I just have questions about it. But yeah. that's what I'm being trained to do is have questions about it. Well, yeah, it's your occupation. Like yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, so like what are kind of some of your peer experiences in like elementary school or growing up? Yeah. So elementary school, I had large print textbooks and I had a slanted clipboard and I had raised line paper. So like learning to read and write, I didn't realize how much harder I was working than everyone else. And I got like stared at a lot. Um, Like people would just sort of it wasn't in a mean way, but it was in a very fascinated way, which is its yeah. own challenge. I don't know if you have a similar experience. Well, I feel like in elementary school, it was more of just like a fascination, like, whoa, look at what mm-hmm. your eyes are doing. And then, oh, yeah. you know, in middle school and in high school, for me, at least it would turn more to like a mean thing, like more of a bullying, like, ha, huh, his eyes do something that my eyes don't do. So that's funny. So yours was more about like, the physical rather than the accommodations um i so as far as like accommodations go i just kind of sat in the front of class Mm -hmm. and um um i sat in the front of the class and i went to a private school when i was a lot younger Mm -hmm. and they would have these projectors on the screen and i actually think I, i don't remember i have to talk to my mom about this but i think they were that before i went there they didn't have these these projectors and then since I started going there they literally like started putting stuff on the projectors and then you could zoom in and then make it all you know easy to read and I would sit in the front and as far as like the textbooks go I just read the same textbook as everybody else I did put my head really close to it though like I'd put my head really close to it and and then I would use you know my null point too so it it was just like I was pretty much looking like like this yeah I would do that sometimes too and still do with, um, do you ever like get, get caught or catch yourself doing that with a menu because it's, I guess now we're mostly on QR codes. So that's actually nice because I don't get stared at for doing like. (laughs) I'm pretty, I'm pretty mindful about my, um, my null point because that's like, for me at least, I didn't even know that I had a null point until people started bringing it up. Like, I didn't know that I had to move my head in a certain way. That was yeah. just kind of the way that things were for me. And I never thought anything different of it. And then people would make fun of me like, oh, like he's looking all the way this way. Or like, why is your head? Yeah. Like and then that made me really mindful of it. And then so, mm. so now every time I look at something, sometimes like I'm pretty cool with it now. I've gotten a lot yeah. more comfortable with my situation as the time, you know, has went. Mm. But yeah, I would, I would always like, keep my head straight and like try not to to move it as much as possible especially in high school yeah yeah so it was definitely for you like it's a very like something 
so personal like yeah how, how you look and how you're experiencing the world and nystagmus yeah. was like my whole um like my whole existence for a certain period not for too long but yeah. um it was either my freshman year or my sophomore year of high school it was pretty much the only thing i would ever think about every day and then it was um like you know you're in high school right like when i'm in high school um i didn't when i was like a freshman or a sophomore you don't like i didn't have too many real friends i didn't start getting those until later on um, yeah yeah so it was mostly just like service level people and they would always be talking like mm-hmm. bad about it so to me that was just like anything that i would always think about and, yeah that's um, awful yeah. yeah but that so that's so was that the experience for you or is it different because for a lot of people it's like that yeah i took no shit uh <laughs> i was kind of mean if people said anything and then they stopped uh so there you go. that's yeah like for example the the biggest example is i was a senior in high school i was taking calculus and the teacher decided to right on the opposite board and she just said real quick like i'll come catch you up and some people are like that in and of itself is a problem she shouldn't be like singling you out but i didn't see it that way because i worked with her one-on-one a lot because i wasn't good at calculus (laughs) i was like great i will get the one-on-one help that's a win-win um and this kid was like huh how are you a national merit scholar if you can't even see and I fully stood up in my chair and said, do you want to say that again? Um, that was the kind of shit that I put out in the world so that that shit did not happen. That's to what me. you gotta do. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's not, that's not anything that I really did until I got older. Like yeah. When I was a sophomore. I was just too scared to do that. But yeah. Good for you. The thing is I'm not the same way about like accommodations. I feel much more like when people are fascinated by them or I've had people like really point me out in public I feel like less okay about just being like hey no you don't get to do that I feel like a lot more self-conscious about it which is funny (laughs) I get it yeah I've never like yeah like I said as far as the accommodations go I didn't I never really got much of it so I can't relate too much with that yeah yeah, it's just an interesting, an interesting thing. I can't really explain. So one of the things that I always run into is, not always, it's something that I've ran into. I could probably count them on both of my hands where people see me and they think that I'm drunk or they <laughs> think that I'm high. Do you have any experiences like that? Yeah, so my best one is that in college, I started giving plasma um, to buy groceries and have like extra spending money Mm -hmm. um i say that like i'm so disadvantaged and now i just wanted to be able to have like a (laughs) hundred bucks so anyway yeah i would go do that and you have to start off like you have to see a nurse like it's a very serious thing because like you can have allergic reaction if you're drunk it can be really bad for you uh because you'll get super dehydrated and sick and so they, they take care of you. And so I was in the nurse's office, like the first time I did it and she's looking at me, talking to me and she's like, okay, like what, what's going on? Are you on meth? And I was <laughs> like, no, no, no. <laughs> Cause first of all, the people around me were more likely to be on meth than they were to be like smoking weed or something. So I was yeah. like, I see where you're coming from a little bit, but right. also no. <laughs> I've, so do you ever run into a nurse or a doctor who notices the nystagmus and they already like know what you've, what you're, what you, like what you've got going on? Who already knows? Um, like they, they see your eyes and they're like, oh, you've got nystagmus. Oh no, I've never had that. I've had really? nurses and doctors be like, what's happening? It's crazy. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. like they're supposed to get taught about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they are supposed to. Maybe I've just had bad doctors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've I've run into a few doctors and uh, slash nurses who have seen my eyes and they're just like, oh, you have nystagmus, and I say, yeah, yeah, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's nice though. That's so much better than the alternative of them. I'm worried about you. Um, yeah, because, like 
it's so bothersome to them when your vision isn't like correctable and also does this happen to you do you test better at the eye doctor than anywhere like vision tests i don't do any vision tests that aren't at the eye doctor okay you just get a no every no matter what well, I don't need it for anything. Yeah. Like, nobody's ever actually asked me for um, a vision test. Yeah. Not since I was in like in high school, maybe like for sports, yeah. stuff like that. Maybe that was, maybe, yeah. I guess the last time was for sports, like in a regular physical, they don't do it. Yeah. But, yeah. I guess it has been a long time. I've also, no, I think part of it is I get tested for like accommodations at school. So I have them more often. And oh, okay. I'm always worse on those. I got you. So do you ever feel like you kind of have, like if you're meeting somebody new, do you ever feel like you have to bring up the eyes and be like, oh, by the way, like there's nothing wrong with me. It's just like something that I was born with. Like, how do you go about that? Do you feel yeah. like there's often in the room? Um, no, so like I said, I'm kind of mean about it. Um, not, not too mean, but a little bit. Um, so I won't say anything because I... Like, I, the thing is, I think it really, really affects me. Like, my actual day-to-day experience is so impacted by what's happening with my vision. But in terms of, like, thinking about it, I only think about it when it is what's happening. Like, it hurts or I can't get it to focus. Um, when I'm, like, meeting people, I don't expect them to say anything, usually, unless... Uh, one, it comes up in conversation, like we're having a good, you know, night and um, we want to tell a story about it, my husband and I, or, you know, I want to like mention it for some other reason, or I want to say like, uh, can we, like, um, I was at a bar in Boston and I just was like, oh yeah, um, you know, I have this issue. I'm going to put my sunglasses on now. Um, and (laughs) And then somebody came up to our table and said, okay, and everybody's really drunk because it's a bar. He comes up, he's like, so we have a bet going. Are you blind or high? (laughs) 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 Or like, blind-ish, please leave. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. um, Yeah, but, and then the other thing is people will be looking at me and suddenly say like, hey, what's going on with that? or you know make a joke it my reaction will depend on what they say because yeah. if they're like curious or like want to know if i'm okay then i'll be like this is what it is and then if they respond cool i respond not cool <laughs> <laughs> and um, but if they're a dick about it right off the bat i'll just be like sometimes i say like it's my party trick and sometimes i say it kind of with some acid um <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah well you actually well you mentioned that sometimes you would put on sunglasses so that was one of my questions was if you ever put on sunglasses if the shaking's ever getting too bad or too uncomfortable yeah so it's definitely the shaking i also have ocular albinism so when my eyes get irritated with nystagmus or when the lights are weird then i'm like oh uh, it's 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 both for sure, but it's also like extreme light sensitivity. So I'll put them on then. And um, also sometimes it just depends. I don't know if this is your experience at all. It's um, interesting to me to like try to parse out what is what <laughs> with my vision. But like if there are like floating lights, like those really thin, like modern lights above me, it's like I can't handle it anytime. I'm like need my sunglasses on or to like, keep my head down it's hard for me too yeah. especially if it's if it's a dark room and then it's just the lights mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's a lot they'll they'll just be moving around everywhere yeah it's, there's that too <laughs> there's definitely that where like you see an alarm clock and then you look back at it and it's like <laughs> yeah that's yeah. that's sort of the common things that i hear about like anybody who i'm talking to about nystagmus they always bring up the alarm clock yeah. <laughs> so it's funny that you bring that up we all That's have the really same fun. alarm clock exp- i'm literally gonna write down <laughs> for, for, i'm gonna write down alarm clocks so because now i'm just gonna see if anybody brings it up in a future episode okay. you, like a reoccurring you thing. Dally. yeah that's funny 
Yeah. So I got here. So what do you do that? So I guess you said, you know, if you're uncomfortable, you'll put on sunglasses. Is there anything mm-hmm. else that you'll do that will kind of make the shaking go away or at least make it more manageable? Yeah. So I do, I had, when I was a kid, a really specific null point, like, like about like that. Now it's not as steady, like post two surgeries, it's not as easy to identify. Uh-huh. So sometimes I'll just be sitting there like trying different angles to figure out like how to bring this into focus. Sometimes I'll like push on my eyes, like close them and push on them and then blink a couple times and that will help a little. Um, okay. Is there anything that you know is, makes them makes them worse? Like anything that you do that would just make them go crazy? Um, I mean, if I try to cross them or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed if I'm uh, if I'm anxious or if I'm paranoid. Oh yeah. Or if there's yeah, something yeah. coming up, like they'll just start going just, crazy too. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll just be talking tired. to somebody. Yeah. yeah, if I'm tired too. And, and then there's sometimes I'll just be super calm and I'm just talking to somebody. And we'll be talking for like ten minutes or so, and then they'll just start going crazy out of nowhere. Huh. And, uh, yeah. And that's I annoying. Feel like that in like meetings or like job interviews or something like that there like comes a point where it's like i've been concentrating so hard for so long like on the interview and trying to make eye contact that all of a sudden it's like okay i can't see them now (laughs) that's that's fine i'm gonna keep rolling but there's nothing here (laughs) i can kind of relate to that yeah yeah um do you have any issues like recognizing people's faces? Yes. <laughs> yes, very, very much. In college, I when I first met my husband, I would memorize what clothes he put on in the morning so that I could spot him on campus throughout Smart. the day. <laughs> Smart. And even now, sometimes I'm like, oh, uh, maybe I should still do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever have anybody come up to you and they'll be like, hi, Haley. Um, and you're just like, who, who are you? No, I don't no know idea. who you are. No idea. But, you know, I think that might be more of a me problem. <laughs> um, yeah. I've had that but happen. I, where it's just, I literally feel like I know them, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, can't. To me, it's because of the vision. Like, I just can't. Oh, no. I'm not good with faces. If I get to know you yeah. better, and I yeah, see yeah. you more often, I'll recognize your face. Okay. But if it's a one-time thing, then it's tough. I see what you mean. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was really bad. There were like multiple occasions of me like grabbing on to men at church who were not my grandpa. (laughs) People would just be like, okay, (laughs) moving on. You ever hop into the wrong car when you're younger? (laughs) Not quite. (laughs) Almost. (laughs) Many, many almost. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You ever open the door and see that it's like not one of your parents yeah or like look in the window and either it's not the person or like there's stuff in there like i always get that like gut-wrenching feeling when it's yes. like there are tennis balls in the front console this is not the right thing like, yeah yeah like it's so close but there's something that's slightly off and you're like oh wait yeah. a second oh. this might, not be, this might yeah. not be the move yeah yeah and then when I was a kid, I also used to walk through a screen door, like this specific screen door at my <laughs> friend's house all the time, like every single time. And I still like it happened so many times that I was like, OK, clearly this is permanent. And I still walk through any kind of <laughs> door with my hand out like, <laughs> OK, it was pretty embarrassing when I was seven. It's going to be much worse at 24. <laughs> <laughs> I do that, too. I'll keep like my hand out if I know that there's. A, like a sliding glass door somewhere or a screen somewhere that I've probably walked into already. I'll kind of just like keep my hand out just in case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's definitely the move. So pretty much like winding down here, I don't have too many other questions, but yeah. I was wondering, do you have any advice to and like any kids or teenagers who are struggling with this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one big thing is like, it's okay to be upset about it sometimes. Like, if you have this feeling of, like, 
God, like I've always dealt with this. Why am I like upset about it now? Or like, I always knew I might not be able to drive, like, come on, just deal with it. And this is kind of more mental health advice, but like, it's okay. It sucks. It really sucks. And like, you're not going to be upset about it forever. You'll like go back to being upset about something else <laughs> or doing something else. Um, yeah. But like, it's okay to just ride that out for one okay. thing. And then the other thing I would say is like, it's also okay to be a little sharp with people about this because if they were like staring at someone in a wheelchair and asking them like why they can't walk, uh, everyone in the world would be like, you're such an asshole. Like you shouldn't be allowed in public. So I it's know. okay to be a little bit of a dick. There's some double like, standards with that, right? I yeah. feel like for blind people or visually impaired people, like you can make fun of them in movies but you can't yeah. make fun of somebody in a wheelchair. It's just like, yeah. hey, hey, like, what about us? Like, it's yeah. funny. It's not cool with them, but it's cool that you can do it with us. Like, why? True. It's like some disabilities don't count, you know? I know. Yeah. 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 I don't know what it is with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so have you have you ever met anybody in person with nystagmus? I don't think so. Um, no. I don't think I have either. Oh. And I, well, the, the, the most funny thing about that, though, is that the easiest way for anyone else to tell would be by looking into their eyes, but I would have no idea. Like, I would yeah. not be able to do it for long enough to identify it. So, ironically, I'm the least qualified to find someone else. <laughs> Same here. Um, on a lot of forums and a lot of comment sections on YouTube videos, I see a lot of parents who have just found out that their child has nystagmus and they're always very concerned about it and they've never heard about it before and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. What would you say to anybody in that situation? Yeah. So it's funny because it's like, it's so, so hard to be a good parent. And I'm like just getting to the age of like, okay, wow, this was really hard for you. Like, I understand. So much. Like, not just like forgive you or something, but like, I truly understand where you were coming from on this like move. Um, because the thing is parents, like there are, some, there are just so many ways to fuck up. Like, because if you're too intense about it or you're not intense enough. So I'm talking about like with interacting with your kid and like right. talking about it as you go. And with like, telling other people about it because it's really rough. Like my dad didn't tell this major connection that he set me up with that he is like his fraternity brother. He'd been, they'd been friends for like 30 years. And he set me up with him as like um, a connection for a really big law firm. And I was like, oh, he's like, don't practice in Indianapolis. I was like, oh, I can't practice in Indianapolis. He's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, it didn't feel good that my dad seemed to think it was like something we should keep a secret. But also a different kid might say, oh, it didn't feel good that my mom didn't think it was something I wanted to keep to myself. Right. <laughs> so with that, I would say like, like everything in life, you probably won't be perfect and that's okay because your kid's gonna grow up and like understand better. Um, but sorry about that, parents. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. It really isn't. Um, but in terms of like, what does this mean? Is everything going to be okay? Um, can I trust these doctors type of thing? I would say like, generally, yes, but with everything medical, you know, you should keep your eyes out for signs that this isn't a good doctor. You should look at reviews. You should talk to other people that you meet. Um, to make sure that your, your kid is going to get the best care. And then, you know, there are places, um, you know, look into like the best care for children generally, and you'll probably find the best eye doctor um, or eye surgeon if your kid needs surgery. Um, but yeah, and, and, and listen to them. Don't um, try to limit the period that you're in denial so that you can help your kid. Yeah. And yeah. Um, was there anything specific that your parents may have done um, that made you feel more comfortable um, that you think other parents can can learn from? Yeah. So my family is the type where, like, if it hurts, you laugh about it. 
Um, or you don't talk about it because we're very Anglo-Saxon. But if it hurts just badly enough, uh, then you laugh about it. And that, it always helped me to be like lightly made fun of by my parents. Um, not really anybody else. I agree. Yeah. Now, you know, now my husband can, but it's, it's not a big group <laughs> that can do that. Um, but that made it so that I could. And to me, it could be like, yeah, um, my funniest jokes are my vision jokes because like nobody else can joke about it. And <laughs> yeah. people, people appreciate hearing like that reprieve. Um, I always dislike when somebody that I'm pretty close to kind of like makes a little joke about my eyes and mm -hmm. then you hear some sighs like, Oh, come on, man. Like you shouldn't have said that. Like to me, I, I encourage kind of like s some jabs like that. Cause it makes, yeah. it makes you feel like you're like, one with everybody else it feels like you're yeah. part of the same like the last thing you want to do is be looked at differently than everybody oh, else yeah. for sure yeah for and, sure. and I, I like if i start the joking then that's like great and you know but it's something to be mindful of also you don't want to be too hard on people <laughs> yeah. um, okay sounds good um do you do you have like any thing else that you would be interested in talking about? Huh? I don't think I have any any other like really great story. So yeah, let me go. Okay, I think I kind of much pretty much just kind of like ran through everything on the list here. Yeah, I agree. Let me see. Um, I don't. I don't really think I have anything else. Okay, well, sweet. Well, thank you for coming on. Oh yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was great. Of course. Yeah. Really this... great to commiserate. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, like like we were both saying earlier, there's nobody that we've met in real life <laughs> who has nystagmus, and yeah. it's hard to, but thankfully now because of the internet, it's easy to find other people with it. But um, yeah, if we didn't have the internet, I don't know how we would find yeah. others. It's, you know, the world is so different now, and that's in a lot of ways it's a good thing because we get to have this experience. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. I'm just gonna end it here then. Uh, let's see. <coughs> oh, I held in the coughing all the way until now. <laughs> <I think laughs>